Hello, my name is Bates. I'm with Gallup Technology Group and on this video we're gonna go over how to download and install and configure GreenShot. GreenShot is one of my favorite programs of all times to take uh, screenshots and uh, create some uh, instructions, documentation, etc. based on images. First thing we want to go we want to do is go to uh, getgreenshot.org as you can see over here and on this page we're gonna download now you can choose if you want Windows or Mac. They charge a couple bucks for the Mac version. Totally worth it though. This is a very old program that haven't been uh, upgraded since 2017, but I don't see any features that are actually missing on it. So we still use it, still love it, and didn't have any red alerts from our cybersecurity software to tell us that it's dangerous to use it, so we continue using it. Installation should be very self-explanatory. Next, next, I agree, all that fun stuff. Uh, over here, uh, one thing that I suggest that you do check is the Imager plugin. It's a pretty good one to use. And uh, Microsoft Office plugins, it makes your life easier as well down the road. If you use Box or Dropbox, I suggest that you do that again as well. Installation takes just a few moments and as soon as it's done, you can be done with it. So we're going to leave this web page over here open for some explanations, but you're going to notice a new icon on the bottom right on the taskbar. And if you right click on it, you're going to see a few options over here. I'm going to go to the preferences window because I want to go over some of the stuff over here. First of all, um, launch on startup we our team uses that all the time because we need this program running all the time because all I want to do is just be able to click on the print screen button when I need to take a screenshot but another important part over here is if you want to capture a specific window for example it's going to be alt print screen and uh, the last region that you chose so if you have instructions that you take screenshots of uh, you, you capture the same area every time. Instead of pre clicking on print screen and dragging it every time on the same area, you just do shift print screen. So go over these features over here. And if you want to change it, you can click on it over here. And instead of alt print screen, we can do shift uh, D or whatever it is that you decide to do. I'm not going to change it over here. On the capture screen, um, most people leave it alone. I don't like to have the sound, uh, but capture the mouse pointer is the only thing that I usually just uncheck and um, how many milliseconds before the capture happens um, you can leave it alone or play with that it's completely up to you I suggest that you jump over to the output window and that's where you could determine determine where it's gonna save the screenshots so my recommendation is to either go to your uh, documents folder and create a new folder for example we'll call it um, screenshots and or do the same thing on your desktop folder whatever works for you but now you want to go back here and under documents you're gonna see the screenshot folder so every screenshot you take will go there the naming pattern will have some variables over here what was the window that you were on the title of the window so if for example we're going to do a capture from the downloads page here the title of the file will be downloads and then today's date and time it was taken etc image format png or jpeg are the two that most people use uh, the difference is with png you're going to be able to have some borders and some transparency uh, added to it um, most people change it to jpeg and you want jpeg to be um, all the way to 100 percent quality if you do choose JPEG. On the destination, this is where, where it becomes um, very interesting in my opinion. You can continue using it as um, a dynamic destination, meaning that it's gonna, you're going to take the screenshot and as soon as you're done taking the screenshot, it's going to ask you uh, what, what do you want to do with the image. I actually like to uncheck that and I do a few things. I save it directly and that means to the folder that we chose over here. So it will automatically, when I take a screenshot, automatically go to that folder. It will also open the image editor. So you'll be able to edit the image. I'll show you in a couple of seconds, a couple of cool things about it. And I also like to copy to the clipboard. Um, 
those are the only things that I like to use. But if you take screenshots and you just need to send them on Imager, I'm going to show you in a moment what that means. Or if you usually just add screenshots to Outlook, you can just check the box here as well. Those are the ones that I like to use. Printer, plugins, and expert, I would leave those alone. You don't want to touch those. So if we want to take a screenshot of this window, what we're going to do is print, click on print screen button on your keyboard, or you can go over here and manually with the mouse do that if you prefer. That will give you the, uh, the cursor over here and with a little magnifying glass. And let's say you want to take a screenshot of this area over here. So as soon as I left, uh, release the mouse button, the three things that I told the computer to do, it did. It opened it in the imager editor. It copied it to my uh, clipboard. And it also saved it. So if I'm going to go back over here, all I had to do is just click on the uh, print screen button. Here is the file that I just saved over here. And remember that it was, I told you it's going to take the name of the title of the window that you were on, downloads, profile one, that's a Microsoft Edge profile, and the program that it was on. So it really adds some indication where the screenshot came from. So I'm going to expand that. This is actually the um, image editor. And this is where it becomes really cool, in my opinion. First thing that you want to know uh, is that you can click on this button to upload it to Imager. Imager, uh, when you click on that, it's going to uh, upload it to Imager, which is a free uh, image sharing website. And as soon as you click on it, it uploads the document, but also copy the URL of that document to your clipboard. So if you open a web browser or if you want to embed that link on a chat, you cannot attach an image. Maybe I just pasted whatever was on my clipboard. That is the link and I open it and here it is. We're on the Imager website. This is the direct URL or page that he was on. And you can now send this to the recipient via text or chat or whatever. So that's one thing I really like about Imager and about GreenShot. Second thing is if you want to create instructions. So for example, I want to tell people, um, hey, step number one will be to click on downloads. Let's make the line thicker and let's maybe put uh, a blue um color well, well we can change the colors over here etc this is for the fill um and let's say we want to also change and have uh arrows on both sides or whatnot again some cool options over here so this is step number one, click on download. Step number two is to click here. And step number three will be to click there or whatnot. Now, those are just arrows. If I click on the counter button over here, I can now just click with the mouse one time, two times, three times. It's automatically number numbering the next click with the next number. Uh, you can obviously make this bigger. You can make the numbers change as well. You can change the colors of the circles, etc. And if you do that, you can see how the numbers all change here. So you can continue instructions on the next screenshot, etc. Now, uh, highlight, very simple little thing that you can do. Let's say you want to blur this text. This is maybe information you don't want to upload or share with somebody. You just drag it and it pixelates, it pixelates things. You can make it more blurry, less blurry. You can add a line over it to show that it's blurred or whatnot. And um, of course you can crop the image, you can add borders, uh, you can resize it, and um, uh, a lot of other cool things that you can do. Now, if you're done with all this, you can click on save again. When you click on save and you open back the documents, screenshots, this is now you can see the preview of the thumbnail over here. It's the same file as before. It didn't create a secondary one. It just overwrote the first one. But if you want to do save as, you can then tell it where to save and give it a different name or different version or whatever. Another thing that uh, you can do is just copy to your clipboard. And then now that it's here, if you open any programs, uh, I don't have on this computer anything other than uh, browser and stuff but if let's say we open paint 
you can now paste this image onto another program like the body of an email, etc. And if you had Microsoft Office installed, you're going to see a Word icon here and a uh, Outlook icon over here. So if you clicked on it, it will actually open a new email message or a new Word document and paste this document, this image onto Outlook, the body of the email. Uh, lots of cool other things that many people use, like these notes, for example. Um, and then if you're here, you can start, um, you can add whatever you want, and then you just add text inside of it. Uh, this is the first step, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think that's it. Um, getting some borders around uh, circles around highlighting some stuff and just regular lines to cross things over um, lasso freestyle uh, those are the main features that we use all the time but once you have the image you can simply save it or you can copy it into a ticket into an email or whatnot that's it guys if you have any questions you know how to reach us bye, -bye.